So in the last video we took a look at the completely randomized design and we learned that uh, one of the advantages of the completely randomized design was that ANOVA is a nice context in which to analyze the data and in particular if you had uh, just a, a single factor with multiple levels a one-way ANOVA would work really nicely. But one of the downsides of one-way ANOVA is that the F-test associated with it is not super helpful. Um, it can help us answer the question, is there any treatment effect at all? And is, you know, is it statistically significant? But often we want to know something more, something more at like a granular level, like what treatment combination is significant or which treatment uh, in particular is significant. And we can't always get this from a T-test. So one example, if you think back to the uh, effectiveness of espresso brewing. The F-test told us that there's some difference with respect to the mean foam index between the bar method and the other methods. Right? The bar method was sort of the control that was absorbed by the intercept term. But it would be nice to know whether there are differences in the mean foam index across, say, the other two, right? the hyper-espresso and the i-espresso method. And contrast will allow us to uh, to answer this sort of question and much more complicated questions. So let's go ahead and define a contrast and then we'll see how contrast can help us test hypotheses and then in the next video we'll take a look at uh, actually implementing contrasts on a real data set in R. So let's start with a set of P parameters and we'll call them theta and ultimately these thetas will turn into mu's which will be the mean of a response for each level of a factor and we'll also start with a set of constants C1 through CP so these constants are known but the parameters of course are uh, not necessarily known and in most cases they won't be so let's define our contrast as gamma and it's just equal to a linear combination so the sum from i equals 1 up to p of ci times theta i. And this thing is a contrast if the sum of the ci's are equal to 0. Now, uh, we can estimate a contrast uh, in the following way. And you might say, well, why do we need to estimate it? Well, it contains unknown parameters. And so if we want to actually use contrast with the sample that we have, the experiment that we have, we're going to have to estimate it. And so the obvious choice would be to include anything that you know, so we know the CIs, but then to estimate any quantities that you don't know, for example, the, the theta i's. So we substitute in theta i hat for theta i. All right, so how is this helpful? Well, suppose we have a completely randomized design with one four-level factor. And just as a side note, uh, this will work if you don't have a designed experiment, but you have observational data and you're just using uh, ANOVA or regression. But let's just assume uh, that our context is a completely randomized design. So suppose we have the parameters mu naught through mu3, and those are the true means of the response at each of the four levels of the factor. So one of the many things that we might like to test is the null hypothesis that mu1 is equal to mu3. And we know that we often write this as mu1 minus mu3 is equal to 0. And so we can write the left-hand side as a contrast. So we could write this as 0 times mu0 plus 1 times mu1 plus 0 times mu2 plus a minus 1 times mu3. And here we can see that our C would have, we might index them as C0 equal to 0 c1 equal to 1, c2 equal to 0, and c3 equal to minus 1. And notice that the sum of those c's is equal to 0, so it is a true contrast. Now how would we 
go ahead and estimate our contrast? Well, the obvious choice is to substitute a sample mean for a population mean. So our estimate would look something like 0 times y0 bar, and y0 bar is the mean of the response at the zeroth level of the factor, plus 1 times y1 bar plus 0 times y2 bar plus minus 1 times y3 bar. And so of course that's just equal to y1 bar minus y3 bar. Right, I'm just writing it out the long way once more so we can see that it's really a contrast. And so we want to use this to come up with a test statistic and then we can use that test statistic to test the null hypothesis that we had on the previous slide that mu1 is equal to mu3. And so whenever we need a test statistic we have to learn something about its uh, mean, its variance, and its distribution. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the mean of our test statistic. And so this should be pretty easy because the expected value of gamma hat is just the expected value of y1 bar minus y3 bar and using properties of expected value that's equal to the expected value of y1 bar minus the expected value of y3 bar and then uh, we should know that the expected value of the sample mean is equal to the population mean right the sample mean is an unbiased estimator so this should be mu1 minus mu3. And then think about what that's equal to under the null hypothesis. Right? Under H0, that's just equal to 0. So that'll be helpful when we write down our test statistic. Now what about the variance? So the variance of gamma hat should be the variance of y1 bar minus y3 bar and since we make an assumption that our data are independent, we can sum the individual variances. So this should be equal to the variance of y1 bar plus the variance of y3 bar. And the variance of the sample mean is equal to the population variance over the number of units in the sample. And so in this case, we, sh we should have sigma squared over n1 where n1 is the number of units that fall on the first level of the factor, plus sigma squared over n3, where again n3 is the number of units that fall on the third level of the factor. And then this should be equal to sigma squared times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n3. Now from there, the standard error, which shows up in the, in the test statistic, is just the square root of that. So we can write that down as sigma times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n3 raised to the 1 half. Alright, so let's use that to write down our test statistic. So we might call this t, and the test statistic should be equal to the estimator minus the mean of the estimator over the standard error of the estimator. And we can just plug in our estimator is y1 bar minus y3 bar. The expected value is 0, right? So maybe we'll write that here. That's equal to 0. And then the standard error will be sigma times. 1 over n1 plus 1 over n3 raised to the 1 half. Then the last question that we need to sort out is what is the distribution of this test statistic? And it shouldn't be surprising based on what you know about t-tests that this has a t-distribution. The only thing we have to think about is like which t-distribution? What are the degrees of freedom? And it turns out that the, the degrees of freedom will be n, which is the total number of units in our completely randomized design, minus the number of parameters that you estimate in the ANOVA. So that number should be 4. 
And that's because our contrast really has four parameters being estimated. It's just that some of them are multiplied by zero. All right, so now that we have the test statistic, it should be easy to conduct the hypothesis test. We just have to figure out either critical values or how to calculate a p-value, which you should know how to do. And so um, in the next lesson, we'll take a look at a Jupyter notebook where we actually uh, have a completely randomized design and we, uh, we actually compute a contrast for that data.